dance. Todo el tiempo. <laughs> All right. Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadre on the Podcast. I'm your host, Marcy. And today we have an amazing guest, Alexandra Cloud. I will let her introduce herself. Who are you? Hi. Hi, Marcy. Hi, everyone. Hi, comadres. Hi, compadres. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Alexandra. I'm also known as Spiritual Cloud. Um, and what else you want to you know, want to know a little bit about me? What are all the hats you wear? What all? What what? What are all the hats you wear? What are all the hats? <laughs> all the hats my husband bought me and uh, created for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I wear many hats. Um, I consider myself at this point in my life a spiritual being who's just uh, learning and growing, discovering more things about myself. Uh, my background and passion comes from acting, dancing, and singing. Um, that's like my love and passion. Um, and then I branched off into acting and um, working behind the scenes, producing, directing, writing. And from there on, I um, I got married. Uh, I became a mom. Wanting to become a mother came before getting married. <laughs> and yeah. um, when I got pregnant, I chose to uh, put my acting on the side, although I was still being creative, but focusing on that first year uh, with my daughter. Mm -hmm. and being a mother and everything that comes along with it and um it was one of the like i tell people it was like one of the goals i had that came to me at 40 because i didn't have that goal and yeah. it's the most challenging and beautiful gift that i've received to be a mom oh, yeah a good so it has enhanced my creativity and my life yeah it always happens. So mm -hmm. um, thank you for being on the show. I've been trying thank to get her on, me. comadres, yeah, for a while. Um, so so we connected via her husband, Rick, who was yeah. a guest on the show before. Um, and basically, you know, looking into her and then, like, all the things that she does, like, I feel like we're birds of a feather because we're both todologas. Like, you you have your hand in everything. You do a little bit of everything. You're creative. And on top of that, you're, like you know, producing your own show and everything. And also she's, she didn't say, but she's half of the wind and cloud that's podcast. Right. So that's why it's so many things. Yeah. yeah so so, so half of the wind and cloud podcast. That's right. Yeah. So that's how we connected. <laughs> yeah. Which is an amazing, I'm going to put the link in the show notes, but it's an amazing um, okay. web series. Um, so today's topic, Comadre, is imposed mm -hmm. social behaviors in communities of color. Yes, it does sound like an essay topic for yes. uh, <laughs> a master's thesis or something. But the reason why the topic came up is because um, a little while back, I had posted an outing that I had gone with my mom, with Aiden, to to uh it was like oh, a right. it was a restaurant and 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 i'm recording and i'm like baila baila right and i'm telling i'm encouraging yeah, yeah, him yeah. to dance right so my friend yeah. hit me up and she was like oh my god you're such a dominican mom i was like what do you mean she's like you kept prompting him to dance and i'm like um no but i don't know <laughs> like what do you do? want that's what we do right so that made me think of all the imposed like social behaviors and the social norms that we that I, we as kids because you're both you're dominican as well that we grew up with and that was like normalized right and what are the pros and cons to that because at the end of the day like yeah we were forced to do these social behaviors but i feel like we're better human beings for it or we're like able to navigate in like social situations in a better way because of it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we already talked about your ethnicity, you're, you're Dominican, but um, can you go a little bit more more deeply into that? Are you first generation? Were you born, um, you were born here? I was born in, in yeah, I was born in New York um, and okay. in the apartment actually. <laughs> and um, yeah, first generation, my mom and dad came from the Dominican Republic from a small okay. temple called Henimo. In San Francisco de mm -hmm. Okay. So we're not far from each other. I'm from La Vega. Um, I'm from a oh, small okay. campo. Yeah, I was yeah, actually yeah. born there. 
and oh, I came nice. here with my mom when I was like one and change. But I feel like I'm, I grew up. Yeah, I grew up here. Um, and you grew up here the whole time. Did you go back or anything like that? I didn't go back. Well, according to my mom, I went back when I was a baby when her brother died. Of course, mm -hmm. I don't remember that. And then um, when I graduated high school, I saved up because I come from a family of five kids. So it's not mm -hmm. like we were on vacation every week, every year. So yeah. I saved up and I was like, I want to go to DR. I want to meet my grandparents in person. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for myself to treat myself for graduating. And we, I went in 2000. I was older, much older. And that's when I, like, I physically met my grandmother and my grandfather, like all my aunts and uncles and cousins that I hadn't met that hadn't come to the States. Um, and that was a great experience because that year my grandfather passed away like a few months later. And I kind of felt it because we had a moment alone in the Galleria, you know, in the front. Mm -hmm. And it was, we were, it was like we were bonding in silence having like small mm. conversations but it was quiet but i felt like that was what i needed with him and mm -hmm. then i was like mm, when i went back i was like i have a feeling like this is the last time i'm gonna see him and that's exactly what happened wow yeah. so how was that experience was it culture shock to like be in dr for that amount of time you know after I growing up here i wouldn't call it culture shock and the reason why i say that is because i grew up as if it was dr in a way because my parents had chickens in the like my father had chick gardenas in the freaking Stop. bathroom girl, <laughs> girl i will open the bathroom sometimes and you know the smell and i'm like what the? oh my god but i just remember as a little girl like oh my god it stinks and i go and i see freaking gardenas in the fucking bathtub we had a cloth so he was just raising his own chicken Wow. So I, I was like, this is the, like, this is the campo, but in an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually, <laughs> yo, I, I tell this story to people. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah. So then eventually, um, one of the roosters became like our pet. Like he, he was there for a while with us. And I, um, I got, I grew, like, I started like loving oh my this goodness. rooster as my pet. Of course. And he would follow mm -hmm. my brother. You know, my brother would be in the walker. He was very young at that time. And he would run around and like jump on my mom's, uh, fly on my mom's head. Then on one day, all of a sudden, I was like, where's Kiki? And they were like, and they were going on a trip somewhere. I forgot it was Connecticut, oh New God. Jersey. And I was like, you ate him. So I do not like Gajina because of that. <laughs> because they freaking <laughs> ate my rooster. <laughs> I like, when you, oh you see God. the clawfoot, I'm like, no, no, no. I, I, I'm no. Oh, oh my God. No, no, like, no, no. And I'm like, you guys took him and that's what you ate for the meal. Oh, oh my so God. Yeah. Why was that a thing? Like my dad got us a a, a, a chick, a baby, because we they didn't want to have a dog, yeah. so they got us a baby chick, and um, we were his name was Puri, so we had Puri. Like my mom was pregnant, and we had the the baby chick, and he was growing. He was a boy, and he started getting older. And then once my little brother was born, he was okay, but then like he got. Yeah. To like that teenage chicken um age and he was like yeah. trying to peck at my brother so we they gave him yeah. to the to the super the super had him down there because he had una cria de, de pollo like he had a oh, bunch wow. of chicken it had right. to be at least You're a right. dozen it had to be like at least a dozen right so we used to go visit puri and then one day we went to visit and there was no more chickens down there <laughs> I was so, I hate, oh my God, I couldn't stand that man. You know, he had a big belly too. And I used to be like, ese perro se comió mi pollo. So yeah, like they had parties oh in my, my house. God. There was constantly people there. Like it, it was like, I was embraced with that culture. Like I grew up with that culture. I grew up speaking Spanish first. I didn't speak English. Yeah. So Same it, it was like when I went to DR, maybe the culture shock was like going to the campo and dealing with the bugs, oh, no AC. May, I would say that. like And no electricity and, también, right? No electricity. Oh, la luz que se te iba. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. shit, no freaking light. But then I loved, like my, my, I went to the resorts and everything, but I will always say that my favorite times were in the campo. Despite yeah. the fact that we didn't have AC, se fue la luz. 
it was just the 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 feeling of like the humility the love that 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 everybody there has a community it was just beautiful it was so I beautiful agree. to experience that yeah. the, and i want to say something about the humility like what you're saying is like you know people it doesn't matter how little they have they're so like grateful for you visiting them and, and you know they'll go and take you like their last platano or whatever you know yeah. there was I mean, one I thing they're like, just like yeah just like beautiful they would they they would warn us though because they knew we we didn't know any better so we would just go visit people because we we're on vacation and they let they're like oh no salga don't go out at 12 to visit anybody right because mm -hmm. but the thing is the the logic behind that was that you know these people are eating we don't know what they're eating you know and if you go as a visitor they're gonna want to give you your, their their food you know and that might be the only meal they have for the day so they would always Ooh, like yeah. they had all these little imposed social norms that i didn't know about here because like mm. we don't really visit people here like that but over there is very different but that was uh, that yeah. that's very interesting um yeah. so you said that you guys used to entertain a lot was there like a lot of social events like every weekend or every month you guys had something to do oh, or yeah. oh my god there were always <laughs> social like the Yankees had a game. There was a party. Somebody's birthday. There was a party. Like there was always a party celebration. Or like my dad with his, with my uncle and his friends. They would. I I could swear they had a band. Like he had a guitarra. He had, he was like a DJ. He had the whole entertainment system set up with the albums and the vinyls. He had the the eight. Was it eight tracks? Remember the eight? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Record songs and make up songs. It was like oh my goodness. A party. Hold on. Oh. Make it it's like I'm on bot. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm gonna jump on my mom's bed and I'm out. <laughs> no, he went to he went to put a, a shirt in the hamper, so he came oh. and like dropped it off. But when I, I like, this is the deal, I was right? Like, I have I was the naked, and I was like, "Espérate." No, he had no shirt. Sure, like, he had no shirt sure on, but he had shirt. shorts. Pero yeah, que, yeah. like, the the if the the rule is like you have to be quiet, like a ghost, and then you get soda when mommy finishes the show. But clearly, today you're not getting soda today. <laughs> I'm done. No, but your family was lit though, so you guys had like that we weed, el and party. all this stuff. No, it was party time, and then as I grew up, like people who would come over, we would celebrate. The we know them. It's your birthday tomorrow. Okay, vamos a un bicocho. Oh my <laughs> that's god, how it was that's how it was all the time. Um, and I, I find that it was fun. I, I was a shy um, little girl, so mm -hmm. like as a ba as a kid, I remember being involved like dancing mm -hmm. and stuff but then as i got a little older i would hide i would hide myself in the room and everybody would be partying and i'll be in the room in my own world and then but when they, i became a teenager is when i started coming out again mm -hmm. yeah. no but um what did they, they used to do like kind of like all oh, the the kids will stay in the room and then yeah. the adults are in the living room and then like the teenagers were doing their own thing somewhere else that's how that's it was. funny and also like when the music would go on and people were dancing everybody was together because we were all ah, okay. dance too and we would do the conga i remember the conga line for my brother's like first birthday <laughs> you know of course the first birthday of course and no of Google. course it's like a it's for the adults it's not for the kids <laughs> when my daughter came party. Like, oh hell no i'm not doing this <laughs> Pero, for my, yeah, for, we would get involved but everybody would be in their own world that's so funny. And then, of course, now, the we, liquor and all this. So as I got older, there were certain things that I was just like, oh, no, I don't want to do that in front of my daughter, you know. But um, definitely the imposing of, like, like the imposing I felt like, like they like, were. Go ahead. No, like, of, I would say, like, drinking alcohol. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's a custom in our culture. Desde que tú nace, te tiran un wiki, tú ves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as I got older, and for me, that's my opinion, I don't want my daughter to be around that because no. then she's going to think it's okay. And I want to be the one to teach her. I'm her example. I'm her teacher. So if she's going to mm -hmm. be like, oh, mom, I'm going to go, then well, you do it. You know what I mean? That's going to be her answer. Yeah. And I don't want that to be an example for her. 
So I was just like, no, I don't want to drink around my daughter. I want to be aware. I want to be focused. Um, mm -hmm. And for your birthday, I want to honor you. You're not going to remember that. I'm not going to throw a party of Adele. Oh and then you're there and you go to sleep or you're angry and cranky. So like for me, I was just like, no, there's things I need to change. Yeah, I do love that family gets together. But mm -hmm. there are certain things that I'm like, no, that's not cool. Yeah, so when I was a kid, it was very similar. Like, you know, we would all get together. We would actually, we were actually part of a of a of an association that we were all from the same town. So in this association, it was like a fufu, I don't, I don't know what you call it, but we used to money in. And we used to pay membership it. fees. No, but the thing is, yeah. it was membership fees, but it wasn't like for a numero. It was like membership oh. fees. And if somebody passed away from your family that is part of the, the, the association, they would help you with burial expenses. Oh, okay. So we were part of this club. No, no, there was a, it was a long time. Nobody died. Right. So we yeah, were part yeah. of this um, association. <laughs> so we would get together every week, every, every month we would get together in somebody's house. Right. Yeah. That person would host us. We would have a big party. It would be music. They would have a little like, a reunion and like go over mm -hmm. like, the charter and like talk about different stuff and then you know they would like do prayers and stuff because it was like religious as well and then like okay. after that then it would be the party right everybody would be yeah. getting together all the kids were in the rooms like the little kids in in one room like that they would be playing and then the, the teenagers would be talking and socializing in their own way and then the adults were in the other room and yeah. then um I remember like dancing was like a big thing. Like it was imposed. Like it wasn't like, oh, tu no va a aprender a bailar. Like, tu no me vas a hacer pasar vergüenza. You're not going to let me be embarrassed by you not dancing. Like, and then that's another thing. They used to be like, oh, he dances like they never danced him when he was little. Like that was like a thing. Like they oh, would like yes, jump yes, up, yes. like, like carry the baby, no but like bailar. have them yeah. dance. Yeah, no lo bailaron cuando yeah, chiquito. Yeah, yeah. Like they would have yeah. them dance in your lap and stuff. So it was like, you know, a lot of that stuff, it was kind of like, at one point, I was like, Ugh. like, very begrudgingly, I would do it. But then I feel like, mm -hmm. as an adult, I appreciated it more because, like, I'm able to, because I do love dancing. Like, I enjoy yeah. it very much. But, like, I'm able to navigate certain social situations with much more ease than those families that I found. Because that, that's another thing. I thought everybody was like us. <laughs> Oh. I thought everybody, I thought all Dominican families were like us, like everybody all up in each other's business, everybody getting yeah. together all the time. Yeah. And then I met other families oh, that were not, you know, that they're like more like gringo, like, you know, they are to themselves. They don't really get together, like maybe once a year or whatever. So like, mm -hmm. you know, I, as an adult, I came to appreciate it more, but I definitely feel like how you feel, like a lot of things that were normalized. For us as children, I feel like it's unacceptable for me, for my child yeah. right now. And I, I feel like I don't want to not necessarily participate in that, but I don't want to promote that kind of environment around yeah. my kid. Yeah. You I know? Agree. And it's funny that even at a young age, you were just like, eh, you, it kind of like you thought about it as opposed to like a kid who'll just go along with it. You were just like, oh, so that was interesting to see. Um like your perspective as a young kid. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then like my parents were always like, yeah, they would have a drink, you know, like with their friends and stuff, but nobody mm -hmm. se pasaba. Like nobody would go over and like be, um, irresponsible or you know, irresponsibly yeah. drinking or whatever in front of the yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. But there was always that one uncle that got very handsy. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Of course. And then, and then, so that then you would see the dichotomy of that, like your parents are being responsible, but then the other people that are there are not necessarily doing that. So it, it, it was just interesting in a way, like to to kind of like reflect on that and and look at it as an adult, like and and like what are some things that you're okay with for your daughter? Like I know you're okay with like the, I guess the family parties and stuff like that. I'm okay. Well, because it's part of it. I'm okay with the family parties, but if I, s I'm one like I don't like to linger for a long time, especially mm -hmm. like if it's a certain time and my daughter has to be in bed. Like I'm strict with that. I'm not like mm -hmm. hanging out with my daughter at eleven o'clock at night. Like some people, like at midnight, you're like with your kid in the street. I'm not one of those. Mm -hmm. um, also, like um, if I see that there's people drinking and act not 
acting accordingly, I would I would be one of those people to leave, mm-hmm. um, or or and I'll be one of those people who will step away if she's seeing that happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but but like around my family, they're happy people when they drink. Like my father was an alcoholic, and I remember he drank a lot, but he wasn't an mm-hmm. angry alcoholic. He was yeah. a functioning alcoholic where he still went to work, you know, and he took care of the family. So to me, I saw that like, oh, okay, he's drinking, but he's not screaming at me. He's not hitting my mom. Like he wasn't violent, mm-hmm. yeah. but he still drank and it did bother me as a kid. Mm-hmm. So like, I didn't want that. I didn't want that for my daughter. I didn't want her to be around that because I know how I felt for me and mm-hmm. I know what it feels for me. So yeah, in that situation, I would just take her away. I feel like it, when when we're younger, because those behaviors are normalized, and 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 we don't we didn't have that voice, we didn't have the autonomy to be like, no, this is not okay, you know. Yeah. A lot of those things, we wouldn't say anything about it, even yeah. if they were they were bothering us. Um, I know I have a family member that, um, at one point he was having issues with drinking, and and the and um something happened. Oh, okay, I remember now. So his car burned down. Um, it was a holiday too. It was like right in front. And we, they lived in the suburbs, so the car burned down right in front of the house. Wow. And um, instead of like dealing with the situation, like you know, the firemen came, everything got put out. Nobody was in danger, thank God. But mm-hmm. he started drinking, and, and and he got to the point. And then I remember this vividly because I was like eight or nine. Yeah. He was like drinking heavily and like. Um, screaming and crying and like he had all these vinyls he like so many vinyls and he started just yeah. smashing the vinyls oh, you know wow. breaking them and it was like yeah. so shocking for me because i wasn't used to that kind of um environment and my dad and my yeah. mom like you know i wasn't in the best environment no yeah. but my mom and my dad were kind of just like oh kids go to the room but we could still hear oh. everything that was happening you know but you know it was just kind of like so shocking for me and like you know yeah my dad and my mom would we would go to all these events but my mom was like very um even to this day she's very a very a person that is very like recogida recatada like she's very like by the book and yeah we can have fun but we have to have fun with control you know got it got it. but that was like so shocking for me i was just like what the hell is this like when i was a kid i was like i'm never gonna get like that when i'm an adult you know Look at that. Because it, it was just, it was just so shocking. And then, and the, mm-hmm. for me, it's like, yeah, like, it, 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 like, and another thing, do you remember the little baby sleeping on top of all the coats in the, in the room where all the coats were? <laughs> there was always a little kid, always a little kid <laughs> laying down on the what? coats. I remember <laughs> for my brother's first birthday, I was scared of like my neighbor's husband. And to this oh. day, I don't know why I was terrified. Every time I saw that man, I was terrified of him. Ter- oh, my God. Like, terrified. And when I, so I remember I was in the hallway because we had a long hallway. And mm-hmm. the door opened. I saw him walk in. And I, I was just like, mommy, yo tengo hey, cool, cool. I remember I told my mom, yo tengo sueño, me voy a cortar. And I was having fun. I literally went to my mom's room that was full of like the sofas. You know how they put all the things in. Yeah, yeah, they move all the furniture. To, to move all the furniture. <laughs> I I think I slept on coats on top of sofa. I don't know where, but I I was one of those kids. <laughs> oh my god! No, because then and then and then okay, yeah. so they wouldn't party that That's- late. They wouldn't party that late all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like it, yeah. they wouldn't party that late all the time. But for New Year's Eve, it was passable. Like, oh, it'd be, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. You're, like, yeah. sleeping or whatever. And then that was the thing. Like, for me, like, they would wake you up. Like, you're, like, taking a nap. And you, I'd just be so angry. I'd be like, you guys with your party. <laughs> I'm so mad. You guys with your party. I'm freaking tired. I want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like I feel like it influenced, at least for me and you, it influenced, it influenced us in a... In a in a positive way, right? Like in our parenting, the like, way that we yeah. parent now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, it did. Like I didn't. Um, and I'm not judging whoever. I just feel like for me, yeah, it just taught me like, okay, this is what I want to do. And this is what I don't want to do. That's it. And that's what I feel. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. And then I look back and I'm like, damn, I wasn't thinking about. Uh, at the same time, like with all the imposed uh, things that happen, mm -hmm. when I was young, I realized now that I was older, like. I never thought, like, I never thought about those things. Like, oh, but wait, what they're doing is, you know, I don't think it's cool. Like, I never questioned yeah. it. I was just, I went along with it. Because for me, that so was we saw like, everybody okay, else how, doing it. Yeah. So as I got older, I, I now as I'm older, I'm like, damn, why didn't I question this? Why didn't I question that? But I'm like, I just didn't know any better. That's it. We didn't know any better. We didn't, we weren't giving the leeway like, oh, hey, you can tell us this is fucked yes. up or whatever. Exactly. Because the first exactly. thing they'd be like, Tú te to you think you're a grown man, a woman? <laughs> Especially me. I always get in trouble because of my <laughs> mouth. They're like, <laughs> <"Mia salty>. <laughs> comiendo boca. Como, como, con adulto. Oh my God, you just, I was just about to say that. No venga aquí a comer boca. <laughs> No, and then for me, it changed a lot because, like, with Aiden having autism, like, there's a lot of things that he didn't tolerate as a kid, and That's you know, right. I, you know, I can't, I can't just do what our parents used to do, just be like, Beto por yo con lo muchacho, and like leave him oh. unsupervised the whole time because there's something's gonna go down. Like, not, not anymore, right. thank God. But when he was younger. I wouldn't be able to enjoy the party because I would have to be in the room with all the children because everybody would leave their kids unsupervised. But because I was yes. in there and I'm an adult, now I'm taking care of everybody's badass kids plus mine. You know what oh I'm saying? Oh, my God. So, you know, I'm the one, like, laying down the law. And then they're like, oh, Marcy's no fun, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I'm paying attention to your badass kids that you're not really supervising exactly. and they can get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So, like... At least now, even though he is able to function independently and be yeah. with the other kids without me having to worry, like, somebody's going to trigger him and he's going to, like, you know, try to... Because the thing with him is that he's triggered by, like, noises, Noise. even though he's, okay. like, a, a noisy kid. He doesn't stop talking, but... He's noisy, but he doesn't like noise. Exactly. Does he have to wear like, ca noise cancellation? Ha he doesn't He no. doesn't tolerate the sensation of the of the headphones on his ear. Oh, okay. So I tried these, and I tried the beats, and he doesn't yeah. like any of them. But, like, okay. you know, I have to take that all into account, you know? And then yeah. now that he's able to be alone, I still go in and check on him. I don't just, like, let him just rock, you know, by himself with his cousins because I don't know what they're up to. Just, Plus, you yeah. know... I don't trust that. I mean, now he's actually gotten to the point that even though it is loud and they're playing a lot of music and it's live mm -hmm. or whatever, and my uncle, my, my aunt, my compadre, my aunt's husband, he puts mm -hmm. like these disco lights in the living room. <laughs> hey. He puts, so di he puts the disco lights in the living room, you know, and I, Aiden, you see him there, he'll do like He'll cover his ear with one hand. He'll do the hand helmet like that. Oh. And he'll be there with his phone and the iPad. And he'll just be hanging out with us, even though it's oh, loud. See? He makes it work. But he's That's used great. to that kind of environment now. Like, That's but this awesome. is this is years coming, because back in the day, that was not the case. There was a lot of times I would have to leave the party early. How long because did you of have that. To do, do that to train him how, how long was that process? Because my family has been like this forever, so um, of course, girl. So that would like um, I want to say that he that he's able to like hang out with us during the party. I want to say he started doing that when he was like uh, eight or nine, almost. He's what fifteen now. He's thirteen. Oh, he's thirteen. Okay, okay mm -hmm. that's good. Wow. And then sometimes he wants to hang out with the kids, but like they don't like. He's very much like he'll parallel play, so he'll be next to you if you're playing and you're a kid also, but he won't yeah. really interact. Got and then sometimes it. the kids are too got loud. And then got like got especially got those badass kids that are like just oh, bugging I don't out. Man, I don't blame him. I'll be out too. He's like, no. <laughs> He's like, good. I am good, mother. Thanks though. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I do try to teach him how to dance and stuff, even though he's not like you know like fully social yet. But I oh, I feel like you know yeah. like I want to teach him that those behaviors, even though it, and it seems forceful. Yeah. You know, it seems forceful. But I like I want him. I don't want him to be one of those kids that like oh no te bailaron cuando chiquito. You know. <laughs> 
but that doesn't matter. Does he like it though? When you be like, oh, let's try to dance. Does he like dancing? Yeah, he's okay. Like I'm like, baby, come, okay. let's dance with mommy. He's, he's like, like oh, okay, mom. mom. I don't Oh, okay. No, if he doesn't okay. want to, I don't force him to do anything. If he, if no. like, that's another thing. Like, if he doesn't want to hug or kiss people, I don't force him yeah, to do that. That's a, that's one of one of the ones I want to mention. There, there was mm-hmm. one like, say hi, say like, uh, don't, be, don't, don't have an attitude. Say hi. Oh, that un beso, that un beso. Like, that's one thing that I'm like. If my daughter does not want to say hi to somebody. There's a reason. And then spiritually speaking, they see more. Yeah. Because they're so open. You don't know what the hell that person's carrying. Um, She's actually telling me <laughs> to stay mm-hmm. away. So why am I going to force her? He's so, pretty yeah. cool with everybody. And uh, that's uh, Aiden, like, and I've spoken about this before on the show. Like, Aiden's very much, like, he'll read energy. Like, if he knows that you're a person that he doesn't want nothing to do with you, he's going to let me know. And he's just going to kind of be whatever. Like with his dad's family, <laughs> we go over there. Like, obviously, I'm not going to like not visit them because that's, that's messed up, you know, because it's the majority yeah. of his dad's family lives in Dominican Republic. But when we go... When we go, even this is my family, no problem. Like, he'll go there, and his thing is he'll take off his shoes. If he takes off his shoes, he's very comfortable with you. God, yeah. So, so se quita los he'll chill in a corner. He'll be with his iPad mm-hmm. or his iPhone after he looks around, and then he'll be whatever, doing his thing. When he gets to these people's houses, he does not take off his shoes. He sits in a corner right next to me, and the whole time he's sitting there, he's like, can we go to mommy's house? Can we go to mommy's house? Mm, Can we go to wow. Titi's house? Can we go to Titi's house? And when I know that he reacts like that, that's that's a cue to me. Like, okay, I'm not going to overextend the welcome. Like, right now he's good, but I don't want him to go into, like, full meltdown mode or something to happen yeah, that's going to yeah. put him in a bad mood, you know? So, like, I really that's listen to be. his social cues, especially when he doesn't want to say hi to somebody. I'm not going to force it. Like, I'll, I'll, like no. I'll say hi for him. I'll be like, hey, didn't say hi. And he'll, like, repeat. Yeah. What I said, but if he doesn't want to go and like give somebody a hug, I don't want to do Yeah, like, yeah, me, yeah. I, that's like, what I appreciate. About, <laughs> I feel like I'm sort of like I always tell people, I always tell when I'm like, I, I, I know I'm somewhere in the spectrum or something, <laughs> but I always, I, but we like, like I've learned, like we're we all have autism in us, whether mm-hmm. they say it or not, we all do. But what I love more about like if when they're labeled because i don't like to label um children like your son Mm -hmm. that they're so honest and i Mm -hmm. admire that so much because they just tell you like it is no that's it and i admire that so 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 much they teach us so much there was this tiktok of this little boy (laughs) there was this tiktok of this boy he was giving a (laughs) eulogy somebody passed Mm -hmm. away and he dead said that the guy was a thief at the eulogy. He's like, you know, he used to like to steal. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I love that about our kids because they they, they have no, they don't have no pelos de la lengua. They have no filter. They're just yeah. like, whatever. I'm going to tell you what it is. If you don't like it, oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> He's just, I don't know. Like, it, it's just. I, the thing is with him, like, I do teach him a lot about the culture. And that, that was one of the points that I wanted to make is, like, okay, I teach him a lot about the socialization in our culture, especially mm-hmm. when we're in DR, because we do travel often and we're there a lot. Oh, that's great. But it's just so that he won't feel alienated and he won't feel, like, left out. Okay. So I teach him, but then if he decides to participate, that's on him. Exactly. You know, I don't force him to participate, but I do still teach him like all the little things that we learned when we were kids, you know? That's awesome. I love that. I mean, not and the I bendición that. thing. That's another thing that I didn't keep. I wasn't going to have him besiéndole la mano a todo el mundo. Remember? I used to do that, but then everybody like, named Mama. As, yeah. I'm like, I do it to my, like, my mom and my, like, I've stayed with a certain people that I, mm-hmm. that I like care about and who mean something to me. Mm-hmm. I, I will do it because that's how I grew up. But I haven't taught that to my daughter. <laughs> this is just, I'm just like, I don't feel like the need that she has to do Oh, wait, that. but let, let me explain to the comadres that don't, that aren't part oh, of the Latino right. culture. So, like, we had this tradition when we were kids that we had to, like, ask for 
the blessing ask 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 people for blessings especially elders so they would make us ask for blessings to like every witch elder like it would be people that are not even part of the family to be like <laughs> Tío, like you would call them uncle yeah. or auntie, right? But then you would have to ask them for their blessing, which is, I don't know, it's just a little problematic. And then the thing is, like, especially with, like, the stuff that has come out, like, with respect to, like, people molesting children, I don't want yes. to put my kid in that situation where they feel like this person is their quote-unquote uncle and they're exposing themselves to a predator. Obviously, I'm not friends with predators, yeah. But I just, I don't know. I, 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 that was one of the traditions that I definitely did not pass down, and I don't feel bad about it because I feel like it was something very outdated. Because I, I remember, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 my gra- why are we saying that? <laughs> yeah, why are we saying that? Like, and at first I thought it was, it was something like you know how you say usted or tú, like a, 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 yeah, yeah. It's a way of uh, of respect. Of showing so respect. I thought that saying bendición, whatever, tío, sion, whatever, was a way of respect. That's what I mm. thought it was. Then mm-hmm. as I got older, I'm like, I'm just not going to say it to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to, I guess. My Especially mom, the people that respect. are shady. But I'm not going to say it to, even if it's an uncle of mine, but I'm not close to them. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Especially the people that are shady. Like. Why? There's a person, there's some people in my family that they don't deserve for you to be asking them for no blessing. Exactly. You're good. You can keep your blessings to yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> my grandma, my grandma, wait, my grandma, because this is another thing. I always bother my, I don't know if you do the same thing, but I bother my grandma. I ask her about all these like stories from when she was growing up. Oh, that's um, I wish I had. I want to start writing them really. down. You I want to start writing them now. She's the oh, only one that's awesome. left right now. Oh. But she told me a story that th- that was like the tradition. She's from a campo. So, okay. So, we're from La Vega, oh, right? Okay. Grandma moved to a campo in La Vega. So, it's like, mm-hmm. it's not really a campo. It's like a town, right? Okay. But we're from like the country, country, like country. like up in the hills. Like oh, I've been back in the 90s. Yeah, back in the I 90s, you used to it. have to like park your car and go by foot. To go to my great grandpa, and my great grandma's house, right? So yeah. over there in that campo, that's like part of Cotuí, which is another province okay. that's close to La Vega. Yes. So yes. um, it's called Comedero Arriba. So when we used to go okay. to Comedero Arriba, we would always like there was nothing to do because there was like no electricity. So we would just yes. talk and like have conversations and tell stories. So grandma told me the story of her when she was a kid. Like that was the norm. Like you had to ask all these elders for blessings, even if it was somebody that you don't know. Mm. So grandma, um, she was like, not easy. She was like, um, uh, what do you like? Kind of like Dennis the Madness. Like based on the story she told me, she was, she would get in trouble, but it was for a reason. It wasn't for no reason. So grandma, instead of asking for the benediction or the blessing, right? She said, avision, which means like a vision. So a vision like, if you're telling somebody, have a vision, oh, it's like something bad, right? What? Right? So, the, she said a vision to this old man. And supposedly, according to grandma, the old man had, like, these, like, all go... Then this is another, like, <laughs> a tall tale from the campo. Like, oh, yeah, if you yeah, saw yeah, a man so with much. all gold teeth, because that was the devil. So, the man, he smiled at her and all his teeth yeah, were yeah. gold all gold teeth like that he like stuck out her his tongue at her and then she like started running down the down the hill and she said that she ran so much that by the time she got home she had a fever she had a what a fever a fever but like but it was like it's like all these stories i'm like like why like why do you have to like what was the purpose i don't get it so many like weird and (laughs) creepy creepy stories that i can't sleep at night <laughs> but you oh should when they would write start... them down <laughs> but the, okay so that's one one tradition i do want to have is like sitting down with your cousins and like telling all these tall tales of like the ghost stories i feel like that was something that we used to do especially when we would visit 
yeah. that we used to do that like i feel like it's something that we don't do here but it was something yeah, that like to pass true. the time like there was no electricity there was no nothing else to do no we internet, would play no phone. exactly we that would play you see, we would that. play card games right we would play yeah. el cagao and yeah. like i think yeah what was the other game? Casino. Uh, we used to play casino, casino. and cagao. Y traído. Y traído. All these card games, right? We would spend time doing that, playing dominoes, and then we would be telling... Go well, that. at night, once it got really dark, we wouldn't be able to play because you can't see. Okay. But um, we would be telling um ghost stories in the nighttime. But, like, I feel like that's something that I do want to pass down. Like, you know, so, like... That's spending time with cousins you know yeah. like you know even though if you don't because aiden's the only child right now so like spending time with cousins and like cousins or socializing and things yeah, like that socializing telling stories playing not necessarily just being on your phone and not connecting i feel like mm -hmm. that's something we had in our childhood like we had a lot of connections and and imagination play you know, we played out. I remember playing outside and this and that and the community, like even in New York, even in the mm -hmm. uh, in New York, where, where I lived, like we were on the block. Of course, you know, my neighborhood was West Harlem. Um, it wasn't the greatest, but mm -hmm. we knew each other. So it's just it reminded me of La Campo. It's like a community. That mm -hmm. person knows that person. Oh, mira, yo vi tu hija, yeah. Like, you, you, you have people watching over you, mm -hmm. um, taking yeah. care of you. Yeah. If somebody comes in to the neighborhood that they don't know, oh, wait, 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 who's this? You know, you're being mm -hmm. looked out for. And I feel like that we don't have that as much now. And yeah. that's something that, that I feel like I... If I can, I want my daughter to have, but it's so hard nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's you have to get to know your neighbors. That's another thing. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't try to get to know each other. That's one and thing from the suburbs. Like my mom are moved. like sketchy. <laughs> yeah, my mom moved to my mom moved to the suburbs after um after I was already in college and the little one okay. was gonna start high school. And that was the one thing that I found weird because, like, you know, in the city, we don't, like, besides, like, you know, Dominicans, like, here in the Heights, people don't really talk to you like that. And um, the first thing, that first week, we had, like, visits from neighbors, and I was like, like, why? Really? Bringing you, like, pie? Like, welcome us. to the neighborhood. Well, I mean, not pie, but cookies and stuff I'm like kidding. that, but, like, saying yeah, welcome, yeah, yeah. you know, but no, but it was yeah. nice, like, you know, oh, wow, that community that. aspect. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting, you know, but I feel like it all depends where you are and stuff like that. Because yeah. um, the building I live so in, like we all know each other. Yeah, you know, like everybody. That's knows one each thing. Other. Yeah, but and and then that was good and bad because it'd be like, oh, yo yeah. fulanita. Of course, <laughs> of course. As a teenager, I hated it. Mira, yo vi tu hija. El bochinche starts. But I was, I was. <laughs> I, the, it taught me. It taught me. <laughs> be very very sneaky yeah of course <laughs> of course i'd be like so so my my neighbor's gonna be passing by at this time yo i had i had everybody clocked <laughs> We're going to the oh, library God. our thing my friend and i our thing was we're going to the <laughs> library <laughs> mom be like oh that was our excuse She's like, oh, take your brother with you. <laughs> that was our sneaky way. It's so funny. Oh, my God. So I had another question for you. Okay. So we, we talked about it influenced you in both a positive, like a positive way, like being socialized the way that we were. So I had a question, which was, um, did you feel that it helped you assimilate more to the culture or feel more part of something bigger than you? Like, did you, does it help you, like the way that you were raised, is, does it help you feel like part of something bigger? Like, like when you see a Dominican from somewhere else, like you guys have, if they're like similar to your background, but like similar upbringing, it helps you kind of connect more with that person. Do you feel like? I, I feel like. Yeah, in a way it does. Um, I feel like uh, the way I was raised, I feel like also with a Dominican who's similar, with similar interests, but also in general, like being open to other people and other cultures. Um, because of the community my parents 
instilled in me, like oh, um, being welcoming to others, giving food to those who need it. They were very mm -hmm. humble in giving to others and willing to help. I feel like that upbring upbringing helped to me as a person with anybody else, even if it wasn't mm -hmm. from my culture. Like wanting to learn about the other culture, embracing no matter who I met and being open to that and not judging them. Um, I feel yeah. like that did, of course, help me um, with socializing, too, with other people that I didn't know. Um, yeah, I feel like, yeah, it definitely helped me. And of I course, like, like mm -hmm. in DR, though, I did find, like, I, had a, I, ha I have a cousin that he was very, like, you know the how some Dominicans are, like, pro, how they feel about your skin color, like, uh -huh. you know, the differences in skin color, like if you too dark or you too light. I know people like that. And that like biases. When it bothered me. Biases. The bias. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when it bothered me. That's when I experienced like, wait, hold on. You're not better than me. Or or the or the or or the um being judgmental towards someone from New York, like, oh, tu vienes de New York, you're rich. They think that you're rich, that you got all this money. Yeah. That was one thing too. Coming from New York, oh like you rich, you got all this money. I'm like I'm struggling too, boo. I had mm -hmm. to say to come here, like letting them know that, you know what, what you think is happening is not really happening because they think mm -hmm. that you're rich and you're not struggling, you're not working, but you're hustling. And um, there was that, there was that, like, uh, there was those differences as well. I feel like growing up here, but, and then traveling back, the thing is I used to go back often um, mm -hmm. Not so much before my father passed, but after dad passed, we used to go every summer because he passed around the mm -hmm. summertime. And we would spend yeah. three to four months there. So, mm -hmm. like, I feel like I used to try harder to be extra Dominican because it's like, mm. con todo y todo, like, yes, I was an extra, like a, like a, like a, like a not a stranger, well, a but a, that, no, 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 you're a New York, like a New Dominican Yorker, York. right? Like, Dominican, Dominican New York, no, right? I didn't want to, exactly. New York. <laughs> So I felt like I didn't want to stand out, and not not in that way. So I used to try real hard to be extra Dominican and learn like all the socialization because I didn't want to feel like I didn't belong. Exactly. You know, yeah. I didn't want to yeah, st yeah. stick out like a sore thumb. I didn't want to be excluded because I didn't know how to um, manage myself or conduct myself in those different types of environments you know yeah so i feel like it it, it it was it was positive in in a lot of ways but then it also like negative in a way because i didn't want to like if you don't if you aren't if you don't assimilate to the culture it's so easy for them to like you know kind of shun you and like shun you. take That's you right. out and of you're not group. being yourself because then you're trying mm -hmm. to be something that you're not you know what i mean like oh i want to assimilate mm -hmm. to you but Wait, I am both worlds, so what's mm -hmm. the problem with that? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I hear what you're saying. That's so true. I forgot about yeah. that little part. I mean, our kids are so lucky. So, But tell me about your daughter. Tell me about Choo Choo. Who is she? Oh, what makes her sparkle? <laughs> so, Choo Choo is... Um, she's a, a, a cup of little things. She's sneaky. <laughs> sneaky, stubborn. Wait, how old is she now? You, I'm you, she's three. I'm going to give oh. you the real deal. Yes. She's sneaky, stubborn, uh, but definitely a leader. She's a leader. She's very independent. Mm -hmm. um, she's uh, she's very creative. She loves music, dancing. I know she's going to pick that up from both sides. Music, dancing, mm -hmm. art. She's funny, like her dad. Um, mm -hmm. Me too. I'm funny too. <laughs> but he has the comedic <laughs> side more. I'm more quirky. Uh she's um she's a joy she's a joy and also a pain in the ass sometimes <laughs> and that's real like, let okay. me tell you something i i and I, one of the one of the guests that i had on um like she's like let's normalize not liking our kids sometimes and saying that they're jerks when they're being jerks. hello <laughs> <laughs> when she wants to talk back or trying to be sneaky or oh, hell no oh my gosh <laughs> I mean, like, bitch, no you have I to control so. yourself in, like first of all <laughs> bitch. <the> no <laughs> i remember she was like months she was like maybe one and she gave me this look like in other words like you're not gonna do like that type of look like wow. i didn't see the one year old i saw the 13 year old 
Oh my god! Like literally, my brain went to this is you at thirteen, bitch. Don't even think about it. <laughs> like that's what I I was saying. It's like, bitch. I didn't call her bitch, but I, you know, I was very stern with you her. You thought it. You're like, but <laughs> in my head, I was like, bitch. You. Who are you talking to? <laughs> But that's what I saw, like the thirteen year old. I didn't see the one year old. No, because they they have their little. Ha- they come out with these little personalities. Them. Yeah. Like you think you that there's like them. oh, could yeah. you, could you? No. You have to see them for, and then that's something. Sometimes I I struggle at times that I'm like, oh wait, she wasn't doing that, and then when we'll be like, no, she was doing that, because of course I'm her mother. I, mm-hmm. I'm the one who who wanted the child, so I'm gonna go more with the emotional aspect. But I, mm-hmm. that's something that I be like, oh wait, then I have to stop myself. Okay, am I being emotional or am I seeing her for who she is? So I have to stop myself. And I'm learning, how to, you know, to see her. You have to see your child for who they are. That's what my spiritual teacher taught us. Like, see them for who they are, because otherwise, they will get over, and then you're not helping them as a teacher for them. You know what I mean? You don't want yeah. them to get over. You want them to learn and grow. Of course. Yeah. But what kind of stuff is she into right now? Right now, um, she's into, like, her iPad limited, of course. She loves um, she loves Alma's Way, that show. Okay. On PBS. Curious George. She loves... Um, uh, uh, shows that like have singing and dancing, but teaching them the numbers and ABC. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and of course, she loves to dance. She loves to sing. She loves to paint and color and do things creative. She loves water. She loves playing with water. Oh, and water plays so fun! The, oh my gosh, she loves it. Playing in the or oh, going out. I take her to bike rides. During my, I work from home, so during my lunch break, if it's, I mean, it's like one fifteen here, but if it's not too hot, I'll say, "Oh, come on, let's go." I go for a walk, and she rides her bike, and then I come back, give her something to eat. That's and dope. Work. Yeah, that's like awesome. I was, it's like, let me do that. Um, but yeah, that's what she likes to do most of the time. Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, but yeah, no, definitely. So, what, what, what advice would you have for a parent that comes from such a rich culture like ours? And is like maybe struggling a little bit to figure out what to integrate in the socialization of their children and like what to kind of leave out. Like, what would you advise? I would say, advice to a new parent, I would say, first of all, um, be true to yourself. What is it that is, can you deal with and what can you not? And um, what would fit into something that's going to help your child learn and grow and not try to be something that they're not or you're not, you know, be honest with yourself, ask questions. Um, Don't be afraid to ask those questions and be honest with yourself. And as far as like our culture, our culture, I feel like it's so beautiful and amazing in the sense of bringing people together, the music, the laughter and joy that it brings to have music, to have people come together and dance and have fun. I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, The camaraderie and being open to giving to others and and embracing other people. I think that's beautiful. And as far as like, in my case, like the drinking and stuff like that, I feel like keep it to a minimum and don't have it around your child. And if you don't want your child around that, then don't have it in your house. That's what I, I would say. And of course, have boundaries, you know, choose what your boundaries are and be um, consistent with it. Consistency is key, of course, with your children. Yeah. Discipline I would say and consistency. <laughs> yes, I would say I would say that we have the like as this generation now, we have the power to pick and choose the things that we decide to integrate and create a new mm-hmm. culture from there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, being very conscientious of what you pick and choose and how you integrate it into your life, you know, and, um, you know, and, and definitely setting boundaries. Because I feel like we had no boundaries. Like, it was yeah, just no. kind of like, this is what and communication. This is what it is. This is what it is. And this is what we're going to follow. And you don't have any say. Uh, and yes. what are people going to think? What are people going to say? You know, like, we have the power of setting and enforcing those boundaries and then picking and choosing those things that we do want to integrate into our lives. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that would enrich our children's culture in that way. 
Especially, and also co- with that, like communication, communicate with your children. Um, be have that relationship where you can share, like allow them to have a space to communicate with you too. Because uh-huh. that's how I, I grew up with the co- lack of communication. It wasn't communicated yeah. when you, there was problems or even in like guiding guidance and dating or like, Oh, whatever you want to do when you grow up. I think that's very uh-huh. important for your child, letting them know that they're special, that they're important. Um, letting them know that you're there to guide them, but they're also in life. You have to work out where you have to do. Nothing's given to you. That's very important. Yes. Too, you know? Um, and yeah, cause they show us love, but also let's communicate and uh-huh. not be afraid, especially with mental health and all that. That's what's going on. Don't Definitely. be afraid to talk and share. I love that. Thank you. So, comadres, with that, we're going to wrap up the show. So, I'm going to end the show how I always end it, which is follow me at Comadreando Pod on IG, Twitter, TikTok, mm-hmm. everywhere. Um, and follow Cloud at Alexa Cloud 13 <laughs> on Instagram. Yes, and, of Instagram. course, if you have any questions for either one of us um, at all, please feel free to send me a comadregram. Um, via email at comadreando at escthenetwork.com or slide up into my DMs. DMs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank you all for spending time with your comadres. Alexa, thank you so much for being on the show and bringing your oh, perspective. Man. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. It was such an honor and pleasure to be here to meet you finally to have that <laughs> chat and i just want to say i i love uh your podcast i love the platform that you're sharing and um all the things that you're sharing for everyone the mothers the men the, the children i i just want to commend you for everything that you're doing i think you're amazing continue to kick ass and i wish you all the <laughs> blessings for you and your son Amen. Thank you so much. Give Chuchu a hug for me. Say hi to Rick. Thank you again. I'm really, I'm really. Take care. Okay. Bye.